x minus h and y plus k, that would, that would shift that around, okay? Uh, what's your radius? Good, because we know this is the, the radius squared, so our radius would be 5. Is it a function? Is it a function? Why not? Well, yeah, I mean, visually, we know it's a circle, right? Yeah. That's circular reasoning, isn't it? Get it? Yeah, thanks. Where's my drums? Um, it, it's a circle, so it's not going to pass the vertical line test. That's one way we define that if we actually graph this. It's a center, 0, 0, radius of 5. It looks like this. It's certainly not going to pass that vertical line test. However, can you see it formulaically as well? Specifically, can you solve this for y and see that this is not a function? Let's try that. How would you solve this for y? What would you do first? Okay, so probably isolate the y. Get the x squared over there somehow. You know you're going to get y squared equals 25 minus x squared. True? Now, y is not completely isolated. What would we have to do to get y all by itself? Let's do that. So if we take a square root, of course that means both sides. That's legal to do. On the left-hand side, we get y. On the right-hand side, tell me what I'm forgetting right here. Plus or minus. Oh, yeah. Every time you take a square root of something, you've got to have a plus and minus. So if the square root's on your paper, no big deal. But if, if it's not there and you put it on your paper, like we did up here, right? We didn't start with that square root. We, in, uh, we introduced it to the problem. When you do that, you absolutely must have a plus or minus. Do you see the situation now? I want you to try to plug in a number and tell me how many answers you get out, how many outputs you get out, how many you're going to get. Yeah, because if you plug in something like, I don't know, 4, you're going to get 25 minus 16, right? Right? You're going to get 9, the square root of 9. 3. But then you're going to take plus 3 and minus 3. That's giving you those two, those two answers. As soon as you have that out of a formula, it's not a function. Now the question is, could you work with it to look at parts of this function? And that answer is, yeah, absolutely. If we define this a little bit differently, if we say, well, let's call f of x the square root of 25 minus x squared, and g of x the negative square root of 25 minus x squared. Now let me say a question, is this a function? Yeah, sure. Is this a function? Yeah. Yeah, together, they're not a function, but separately, well, we could talk about each piece. That'd be fine. What would this be? The top half or the bottom half of the circle? Top half, bottom half. Then we could talk about them. Uh, but all together, when we look at that thing, certainly we don't have a function there. Uh, the other types of functions we need to talk about, one of them is called piecewise functions. Before we go on to that, are there any questions on for the line test or what we're doing over here, kind of just showing that all formulas aren't functions. I mean, we, we don't have that necessity. And when we solve them, though, we can talk about pieces of them as functions. Are you guys all with me on this so far? You ready to talk about piecewise functions? You sure? Sure. All right. Here's what a piecewise function basically. Have you guys seen a piecewise function before? Yeah. Okay. I, I know you have. You, supposed to, you know, to be in this class, you've seen it before. Uh, one very basic piecewise function we're going to deal with in just a second. Uh, the, the idea is, though, with piecewise in general, that the formula depends on the value of x. So the formula for the function depends on what value you're trying to plug in. So piecewise functions work where the function changes depending on the value of x, your input. Move over here, some room. The most simple one I can think of, and this is really a, a really simple one that people introduce piecewise functions with, it's one you deal with 
man, you've been doing this probably since like seventh grade, sixth, seventh grade. It's the absolute value function. What's the, the symbol for absolute value? What do you do with that? Bars. Yeah, those vertical lines. Okay, so if I see the absolute value of x, what does absolute value do? The distance away from zero. Yeah, that's right. And, and some other people, you said, what's it do? Like more applicably, what do you do with that? If I put a number in there, I say uh, absolute value of 5. What's absolute value of 5? Uh, okay. And I say absolute value of negative 12, and you tell me it's 12. What? Well, it's a distance from zero. We're counting over. What does it do? What does it do? Okay, so make everything be more specific. You actually have to say this in two parts, right? Because one of them's already positive. So what what does it do? If the if the number's positive, does it change it? No. Okay. If the number's negative, does it change it? Yes. So you're telling me that this function does two different things depending on what value x is. That's really what you're telling me, right? If x is positive, I leave the number alone. If x is negative, well, I change that sign somehow. Does that make sense to you? So really, we can define this as a piecewise function. If we say, OK, uh, f of x is absolute value of x squared, it's really hard to think about that as, as far as a graph goes. I mean, you might know what the graph looks like, but how would you say, you might have memorized that, do you know what the, the graph of absolute value of x looks like? Looks like a V. Yeah, show me with your hands how it looks. Don't throw up gang signs. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's a V. Now why? How can you get that from this? You, you can't. You have to either plug in numbers and figure it out, or you have to define it piecewise. Here's how a piecewise definition looks. It has that funny bracket that says all this stuff goes together. And then we have to define it on a piece-by-piece -piece basis. Here's what the absolute value does. It says, you're going to do something if x is less than or, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 0. You can do something else if x is less than 0. Some people define it as strictly greater than, strictly less than, and then when x equals 0 itself, we're going to define it like this. What do you do if x is bigger than 0? Do you have to change it at all? Now, like this 5, right? You didn't have to change the 5. You just pretty much dropped the absolute value. So we leave the x alone if it's bigger than 0. What do you do if x is less than 0? Change the sign. You say what now? Negative x. OK, so we change the sign. You said negative x. That's the one we could change it, right? If I did this and said, how do I get from negative 12 to 12? What math did you do? Magic. I, I did magic. I'm Harry Potter, so my, my wand. I did magic math. Native's gone right there. All right, all right Voldemort, I'll show you boss. <laughs> Too much? <laughs> <laughs> what this really says is you have to find some math way to change a sign. The only math way we have to change a sign is either multiply by a negative or divide by a negative. So absolute value of negative 12 really says, follow this formula, and says you take the negative of negative 12. Does that give you back positive 12? That's the piecewise definition right there. That's it. That works, it works for anything. You can follow these directions for your piecewise function. It will tell you which part to use. Now, of course, we know this one from a long time ago. But can you see that this is the definition of that? This would do it every time. What's kind of cool is that any piecewise function can be graphed by using their pieces. So we're going to do that next. You can graph any piecewise function by graphing each piece individually. concerned about is that you use the appropriate range. That's really it. So we're going to tack on just a little bit. You can graph each 
uh, you can graph piecewise functions by graphing each piece individually, but you, you have to do it for the given range. So we're not going to graph the whole line of f of x equals x. We're just going to do it for, for a little bit of it. I'm going to use that word domain. Let's give that a try. So here's what we do with graphing piecewise functions. I'll write this out a little bit for you when we get to a more advanced example. Uh, but for right now, basically what you do you ignore one of these functions, one of these pieces, you graph this whole thing and you erase it for the parts that it doesn't actually exist. So right now I want you to think of the, the line f of x equals x. How does that look? What does f of x equals x look like? Sure. You can do it with slope uh, intercept form. What's the intercept? This is in mx plus b form, yes? Okay, the plus b, well, that's zero, so we know it's crossing at, at the origin. What's the slope of that? One. So it means it's going up one over one. So if I were to graph this whole thing, this right here is f of x equals x. Agree? The problem is, is this right right now? The whole thing. Where does it actually exist? And the directions will tell you that. Where does it exist? To the right of the y or to the left of the y? Don't all speak at once. To the right of the y or left of the y? Come on, you've got to be more right. here. Yeah, that's because we're looking for the x's that are positive. These x's are negative. It's saying it doesn't exist over here, so we'd erase that part. That doesn't even make sense. So right now, we know this is the x, where x is bigger than, zero, bigger than or equal to 0. That's why we have this closed circle there, because of the equality that includes that little piece. Since we've graphed that piece already, let's go down to the next piece. Negative x just takes that makes a slope a different way, same intercept. Since we know this already has the piece of the graph, we can't put anything else, otherwise it won't be a function. We're going to leave it just like that. That's where you get your, your v from. This is the f of x equals negative x. Are you ready to try something just a little bit more advanced? Can we do that? Okay. You guys have any questions on the absolute value? You've all seen that before, yes? Let's see if we can sketch something a little bit funner. Is funner a word? I'm a math teacher. It's, this is funner. I guess I should know words and stuff. Are you ready? We're going to graph this piece by piece. Now here's a little hint for you. What you want to do, break up the, the, the domain first. Your x-axis first in the appropriate ranges. Graph the pieces. That'll work out for you. So 